Got the crappie. That water is so clear. It back up in here, and the water is low. Let's flip him in here. That's a yeah, it's a eater size crappie. I'm gonna tell y'all what we're gonna be doing today, and uh, shoot, let's just get straight into it. What I'm doing, this is two pound test line. Um, this is a dock shooter made by All Star. It's a six foot long rod, light action. Now I'm using two pound test, high vicious, um, high vis line, mono on here. Little bitty float. Look how small that is. Little bitty float. And I'm using a uh, inch and three quarter slab tail bait right here. Well, I'm sorry. It's an inch and three quarter long pearl, solid center pearl with a 128th of an ounce jig head, tiny. And if you've noticed, if you noticed right here, I've bent the hook up slightly because that's a size 8 hook. But on 2 pound test line, I don't tie a loop knot. Now, if it was 4 pound test line, it would be a must for me under this float. But I've tied a Palomar knot. I don't trust uh, a loop knot with 2 pound line. If y'all can see that, it's very, very appealing, and very appealing to crappie. That tail, that action right there, when you move the jig, and it don't take much of a movement, that tail is moving. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm probably gonna fish slow. I might fish a little thicker, a uh, quicker, thicker, quicker this morning, because, you know, we got some 57 degree water temps back here. And that's another thing that surprised me a whole lot because <laughs> I didn't think it would be that warm, but it is. 57 degrees. That's pretty warm. That's on the surface this morning. We've been having some really cold nights, but we've been having some daytime temps in the 60s uh, for the last three or four days. So I guess it's warmed it up back up in here. But I'm fishing around 20 inches deep is all. Uh, that's where the fit, first fish come from. 20 inches deep over some timber that we can't see. There's some scattered timber out in here. And that little fish thumped it. It was an aggressive bite. That float went sunk real steady and quick. So there's no doubt in my mind we're going to catch a few more. But I'm just moving the float five or six inches, letting the bait settle back up under it, twitching it like that. That would give that tail the same twitch that you see on that float there on the surface. Just little twitches, move it. I'm going to fish it those two different ways right there. And we should come up with a few fish here. Folks, there's another one in there. Now, I'm just going to barely move it. Let it sit there. I'm not going to move it over a foot. At a time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a cast a little closer to the trees right here. A little bit closer. Now, I'm going to tell you a fact. When it comes to fishing these flats... If they were a little ripple on the water, and it don't take much, these fish would bite four times better than what they are right now. That's a fact. They, that's a good fish right here. That's a good one. Now, size 8 hook is definitely small. But when you bend that gap out like that, it gives it a better bite. In fact, the right bite. I should have this crappie 
Boy, that's a good crappie, folks. My goodness. That's a mule. Here on this river, it's a good fish. I'm just going to take my time. Take your time with a crappie. It'll keep that hook from ripping. They have a soft mouth, but I should have that fish right in the upper jaw, and we do. That's a good fish right there. That's a little short. This is a big fish. <laughs> Huge. Quit. That's a mule. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Now the weight, as far as weight on the crappie, there's the weight. See how thick that fish is? That's where they get their weight. And I'm gonna mention something else. Let's let him go. That's real important. You'll catch more fish like this. My, my, my. That's a big crappie. That water's pretty, ain't it, folks? It's clear. If I can, if I possibly can, I'll use the smallest float I possibly can. Offers little resistance when that crappie inhales this bait right here. They don't even know. They don't even know that there's a float above them. Let's catch another one. <laughs> oh, I'm having fun. Let's make another cast over there on the end of that tree. This water right here is not but about three feet deep. Three, three and a half feet deep. Man, they lowered the water. But now I'm just barely, barely moving it, folks, just like that. Letting that jig settle back up under the float, which it takes it a little time. But I mean, a second or so, maybe a little longer than that, because the jig head is so light. Come on. There he is. That's a good one, too. They're all good. Boy, I love this stuff, folks. Now, I'm having to be real quiet. Real quiet. We need a little breeze. Need a little breeze. All right, let's get down here. Put an ad on him. All right. Uh-oh, don't knock him off, Richard. I'm real careful when I'm using these little hooks, though. I mean... They are small. Bending that gap out is a, is the way to go about it. But that's a good hook set. That's where you want to get them. You want to get them right there. And a straight up hook set to get that done. Or you want to get him here. You get him right there. There's a little bit of cartilage right there. He won't come off. But uh, that's probably about a 10 inch crappie. But let's let him go right here. We got plenty of fish. Mama Sue, she, she's got plenty. I take care of her. I've said it. If I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times. If you got a good woman, be good to them. That osprey. Y'all see that osprey? He delved down and got him something. They don't ever hardly miss. He scared me a while ago. I didn't even know he was behind me, and all of a sudden... <laughs> A fish eagle don't never hardly miss. Now there's a limb that runs off of that tree, kind of at, a, at an angle, and that's what I'm fishing right now. Fishing real close to the cover. That's where the fish are. They're not broke loose from it, which normally in the morning time they are. There he is. That's a good one. Or I think he is. He ain't wanting to move. That's a strong, strong fish. Strong fish. My goodness. What a pretty fish. Beautiful.
There's another fish, folks. That's a nice fish. That fish was mean. I really thought he was bigger than that, but it's a good crappie. Golly. Black crappie. All these has been black crappie. They probably won't be any white crappie back up in here. I've caught very few back up in this area, but that's a nice, nice fish. His tail is split. He jumped my line, and that little line cut his tail a little bit. But I'm fishing extremely slow. Let's let him go. It's a good fish. Ain't nothing wrong about that now. That's the best part of it. If I'm not going to eat them, I'm going to release them. That way y'all can catch them. That's a good spot right there. Good place. What I mean by a good place, folks, is when you see two big limbs crossing like this, normally those crappie will be right in the junction, right where it X's, right in the junction. Uh, it's just a, a magnet for crappie any time of the year. It really don't make any difference. Let's make another cast right there in that same place. There he is. That's a big crappie right here. I love the fish with this two pound line, especially this time of year. All right, let's dip him. Come on in here. Woo, that's a good one. Man, oh man, oh man. That's what we're talking about, folks. That's a male black crappie. He's already changing. You know, he's getting a lot darker. He's fixing to go on bed. There ain't no doubt about that. Let's let him go. Good fish. All right, folks. That's a big old sow cow right there. There he goes. All right, folks, I'm gonna tell you what, that technique right there is one that I'm gonna be using a lot, especially when the water temperatures start warming up because what's gonna happen, the crappie's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. We'll probably catch him two, two and a half pound fish without any trouble, uh, white and black crappie. It's a great presentation and it works extremely well around trees or any type of cover. Now I've been having a lot of questions, getting a lot of questions about these big bulky sunglasses that I wear over the top of my prescriptions. Well, when I was younger and had real good eyes, I mean perfect eyes, I would buy Hobie sunglasses. And uh, that was back in the 90s. They were real popular, but, and they worked well but the thing about it was they were super expensive, even back in the 90s. They were expensive, but we didn't have a whole lot to really choose from. But Hobie's was a pretty good sunglass. But with prescriptions, now that I'm older, I've been researching and looking for the right pair for me. And they're Solar Shields is the name of them. These glasses right here, in case, and they're, and, and they're perfect over prescriptions. They don't scratch your prescriptions up. They're perfect for as, as far as blocking out the sun completely. And that's what you want. I fish a lot of different places. I fish Gunnersville Lake, the Tennessee River, the Coosa River, Weiss Lake, and of course, creeks, ponds, I do it all. And without these, I would definitely be handicapped because, folks, I'm a shallow water fisherman. Um, here in this area, that's really important, especially right now fishing for crappie. A lot of times, I can find one isolated tree that a lot of people wouldn't even see that's not shallow water fishermen. I mean, they wouldn't even know it, know it was there and have 
a bunch of crappie on it, especially this time of the year, just by the simple fact that I have some good sunglasses that I can see down in the water. Now, I prefer the Ambervision lens. That's the Ambervision lens. I believe that, I know for a fact that I can see down in the water better with the Ambervision lens. These are, and I love Bill Dance and I love Strike King products, but these are Strike King clip-ons. And I used these for a while, Bill Dance, Strike King clip-ons. They work pretty good. They're, they're a get-by, but the deal is when you clip these on, you'll have a lot of sunlight penetrate on the back side, and, and it impairs your vision terribly when it comes to, to sight fishing, looking for log jams, looking for any type of cover that a crappie or a bass uh, will relate to. But these are protected on the sides. You can see that in the side shields. That enables you to cut virtually all glare off the water, super important, and catch more fish. There's no doubt about it. I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments. Y'all are Y'all are it. Hey, man. Woo. Go. Go, go, go. And remember, go fishing when you can, because it's good for you.